for some reason crushes it in his hands. Yep. I mean, that's why I call the dark sabers gay. Like it is the gay lightsaber. Hello there, this is Honest Claude. I'm Eric Elliott, and I'm here with my guest Brian, who is the well, at least one of the hosts of Death X Robots, and is the former host of Pink Milk. Yep. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing well, thank you. Doing super well. So, would you like to talk about how uh, we we have discovered each other? Yeah. Uh, I think you came to us through Pink Milk live streams, right? Yeah. Well, before that, you know. Uh, I was one of the uh, call-in guests for uh, for Center for uh, SSW Network. Oh uh, yeah, 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 Bad yeah. Match, uh, yeah. And I think you were simping for Hemlock, if I remember correctly. Uh, still currently am, even though he's a jerk. <laughs> you know, being a jerk and being simpable are, are not mutually exclusive. A hundred percent, I agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you, you spoke there and you saw my face briefly, but I think, you know, you get more of an instance of what kind of person I am by me complaining about Ray uh, just obviously uh, be able to heal, uh, you know, Keller Ren at the end of Rise of Skywalker. Because as I put it, you know, if you want to show that Kylo Ren, well, slash Ben Solo, that he sacrificed himself by healing Ray. You should have Ray make it seem like it's difficult for her too. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just seems like uh, you know it just comes second nature and it, there's no consequence to it up until Ben does it because they need a reason for him to die in the story. Yep. Yep. And it's like it would have been so easy to just give her a headache and have her nosebleed from, from doing it with you know the space snake. It's mm-hmm. just so easy, uh, and also to heal uh, his abdomen, which he stabbed him. Yep. It have been so simple. It just, just to show a little that you're actively thinking about, okay, I didn't just write this and did not look back and review it, <laughs> which feels like in multiple sections of the movie. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like you just described the entire experience of The Rise of Skywalker. No, which but, you know, I don't hate it. <laughs> no, it, it's just uh, one of my lesser favorite uh, in the franchise. Uh, I don't. Lo- I mean, we, we, we love Star Wars, but we're also a bit yeah, critical. yeah. Like we're, we're, oh, we're I... like a parent with a, a dumbass <laughs> kid that keeps getting in trouble. And like, I told yeah. you, and I love you, but can you stop like running into cars? And exactly. <laughs> I try to be, I try to be super aware that I'm a mid forties dude who grew up with the original trilogy, and how that can read online. Yeah. As someone who I don't hate the sequel trilogy, but I don't love them. Like I don't even know if I really like the stories. I love the characters. I love all of the characters very much. And I will Rise of Skywalker's a tough watch for me, but I love how much fun it is. I still watch it. It's probably the one that I watch the most out of the sequel trilogy because it's fun. And I appreciate the the fun in the Rise of Skywalker a hundred percent. Yeah, um it is definitely the one of out of all of the movies. Uh, I think it's the one I've watched the least. It's mm. watched it around the same amount of times as I do Solo, but I do think Solo is written better. Uh, I just think uh, there's more to chew on with Rise of Skywalker. There's more subject uh, yeah. to think into because it's building off, you know, like nine movies kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's dealing with a huge legacy. Yep. Um, I'm a but, massive Solo fan. I love mm-hmm. Solo, and I didn't. I did not know what, how to react to it when it first came out, because I've never been the Star Wars character that really relates to Han Solo. I mean, he's Han Solo, so everyone loves Han Solo, but I've never related to that character, and I can't believe I like. I think Solo for me is my favorite of the Disney movies. Like easy, hands down, not even a question. I love Solo. 
So yeah, good. That's, that's very uncommon opinion. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I respect it. Um, my favorite Star Wars movie, period. My favorite movie is uh, The Last Jedi. It's the only one that makes me feel so emotional as, as I do watching it. Yep. Um, if I'm alone by myself, I cry twice. It's just the way it is. <laughs> there's no people around me it hits me so emotionally. Um, now, the things I would change are like very minuscule. Yeah. Like, uh, like I acknowledge, obviously, I would write things different because I'm uh, different experiences than mm -hmm. Brian Johnson. But he does things. I'm just like, you know what? I didn't think of that, and I'm 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 glad you did. Yep. Like that's why you're in the position that you are. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm not someone that you know screams at the rooftop saying that he he ruined the franchise. I'm like, give yourself. If you if you think that ruined it. The holiday special definitely had ruined it well before he got a hold on anything. Chill. Well, the Star Wars is not ruined. So no, anyone no. who says it was ru is ruined is someone that I probably only would half listen to anyways. There are it's certain exactly. things that are not that are not my favorite, but it's still my favorite thing collectively overall. I love it. I'm really excited for all the new stuff that's coming. Um, that I'm always hopeful. Yeah. I think the only reason I bring it up is because I think people like us that are either positive or relatively positive about mm -hmm. Star Wars and talk about Star Wars, we feel like a responsibility to like address some of the concerns and some of mm -hmm. the you know outright toxicity in the fandom uh, because they have been bolstered up and got so many so much ad revenue. <laughs> uh like they are milking the machine that is just like allowing them to fester even to the yep. point where there was someone that got so there's probably something like you know issue up here but still someone was planning to do a terrorist attack at london for some celebration that's how far this extremism can get Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lump everyone that doesn't like these movies into that. Like, that's never been my thing. Uh, but there's a difference between I don't like something and I have a, like, a, a unquestionable vendetta. Like, somehow, all these channels talk about how they are done with the sequel trilogy, they're done with the, the cartoons and the comics, but somehow they have an encyclopedic knowledge about everything coming out so they can complain about it for nine video straight. It is, it doesn't make sense. From yep. what they're I have a very peculiar relationship with social media these days. So before Pink Milk started, like I was really not online. I had a Facebook account like everybody did that I yeah. used like as a journal basically to post pictures yeah, you, you and did like, yeah. And that was, and I maybe had Instagram here or there from my days of of making comics. It's like more of an art page. Uh, and when we did Pink Milk, you know, maybe after like a year, it just kind of took off. And I'm very, very thankful. Like Pink Milk was really successful and it is still very successful. I've accomplished a lot of things. And for, I would even say my first two years online were pretty wonderful. I mean, I, I've met some amazing people. I love social media. And then, you know, I had to get off and I thought I was going to quit Pink Milk forever because of that toxic fandom stuff and being, yeah. being as open as I was. And at the time when Pink Milk first started, there was really no one doing what we did at the beginning you know it's more prevalent now i think it's happening um now across youtube across podcasts and across all of those things anyways uh i just think we were lucky enough to be kind of on at the beginning of that forefront of different kinds of talking about star wars or talking about media in different ways and making it more personal than just uh talking about the movie and that's it i was grateful for that but being gay online is not easy and i did not know that and the 
the more successful we got, we, and by we, I mean me, I was the only one on social media. <laughs> like the I, had more to, you up into. I had to deal with a lot of stuff. My name being dragged out, watching YouTube videos with tens of thousands of videos, just talking about how terrible I was. And I was kind of dealing with it. It wasn't fun. It was really robbing the joy from me. Yeah. Um, because I am not shy about standing up against people usually, but I think once it became online and I'm very grateful that people viewed pink milk as a very positive space. You mentioned this earlier, just because you're positive doesn't mean you can't not like something and critique yeah. things. I think you can do it in a healthy matter. And I think that's, what's positive. Much like the force it's, it's about, you know, the balance. Exactly. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, like I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you've been able to find people uh, through Pink Milk or yep. Death Sex Robots. Um, so like it, it, it's a precarious situation where you know, obviously going by the name Pink Milk, like it, it's supposed to be evocative of you know pride. And yep. Obviously, people that are allies and queer people, are like oh my gosh, like and those Star Wars fan, I can I can talk to and I can relate mm -hmm. to. Uh, you know, that, that's, you know, has not homophobic, but yep. it's easier to find homophobia in people that will attack you. Like they see you more as someone they can kick yep. than actually speak to. Yep. A hundred, a hundred percent. Yeah. It's yeah, got like, to be a lot. I know, like, even though <laughs> I, I don't really have the, you know, that big of a following, you know, thank you for, my, my 83 subs uh, um, uh, right here, and uh, <laughs> most of you came through my Star Wars Iceberg video. But I know that if I, my channel was like uh, Black Star Wars Nerd, yep, I, I would I would unfortunately open myself up from either people that are really supportive of me because they're also black, mm -hmm. or people that are just like, oh, they want to use certain words against me. I mm -hmm. already know that, and they're already gonna make assumptions about me, like, oh, I'm that, I'm a shill, or that mm -hmm. I'm, you know, destroying the fabric of society with the woke agenda. It's like, it's all really, <laughs> really dumb. A hundred percent. They have no idea how the world actually works. They, they, they somehow yeah. think that, you know, like, like Catherine Kennedy is Satan and that she's going to be taken down by Kevin Feige on a horse. Like it, it's all <laughs> moronic. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. You know, like I, I was, wasn't, I don't want to say fine with dealing with that, but I, you know, you could handle it. I, I managed it was, it was ruining the fun for me. You know, luckily we're a much bigger podcast than we were ever on YouTube. So there wasn't the same. YouTube is very different because it's very for, face forward, obviously. And a podcast is less like that. There's a, a bigger buffer there. Um, There's more effort to harass you. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, but, you know, like, I think after, after a while, some of the biggest jerks that were clearly not ruffling my feathers the way they wanted to. It stopped being about me being gay and it started turning into me being an adoptive parent and then harassing my children and harassing me is whatever. That's what like the That's deal breaker, perfect. because like, I think unfortunately, like my kids are on YouTube, they see things. And so I know yeah, they, they all, they still don't deserve any yeah. But like what started to happen was, those videos about me started coming up in their YouTube feeds and the stuff they were saying was just stuff like, look, I'm 44. I can handle it. But my eight year old at the time can't handle it and shouldn't even have to like hear the stuff that people are saying. And like, it just, unfortunately, you know, I just kind of stopped. I just kind of disappeared. It all came very out of, out of nowhere because I had to put on, parent hat at that moment in time and just cease all everything because I was like I don't need my kids seeing this and that's where it just that was where it got really really just too much too ugly like mm -hmm. I always I always thought there was like 
the line if you don't like no one crosses the child line <laughs> but apparently you can now or whatever you know and it was hard it was hard and but i'm back and i'm very excited to be back pink milk is back we had a lot of people still listening to us while we were gone for almost a year and uh i feel like a different person in and i hope this for everybody when it comes to like online fandom spaces and stuff like that there was a long time i felt like i couldn't say anything either it was i didn't want to annoy the listeners who don't want to have to hear about all that stuff because it's not fun and i you know one thing that i think made pink milk successful is i just think we were fun we also had a really good time i've never forgot that i was putting on a show and so you make it entertaining and sometimes talking about too much real world stuff is not entertaining and i didn't you know and then the games of twitter of like people can put you on blast but you can't ever really you have to stick to sub tweeting a lot which i just think it's so cowardly i think i might understand the logic but i think it's killing i think social media is still new and i think we as people are learning to communicate differently yeah and i think going forward if i get harassed again i'm not gonna i'm gonna have no shame in putting a face out there and i will just put you right back on blast because i think in until people realize you can't just say whatever you want online and then people on the other side who might be doing the better thing by shielding like blacking out your name or not talking about you directly they're not really dealing with the consequences of their actions. And I think it's personally, I think it's really unhealthy. And I know you can get some really gross things like this stuff in London and the vague threats of doing things, but that yeah. person should, that person shouldn't be protected. They should be put on blast. And I just don't think, I think it's irresponsible of the victims of attacks on people to then also take the burden of, also protecting the harasser and i just don't think social media will change for the better if that continues to be the pattern you yeah. know i didn't i didn't get the right to adopt my children and to be married to my husband by not fighting back against society who told me that i was worth nothing i mm -hmm. wasn't always nice <laughs> it wasn't always a friendly like you know like when i'm marching on washington dc it wasn't always in a friendly matter yeah, to get too. what I needed to. I had to fight for it. And that's it's very mm -hmm. much a Star Wars thing for me. Like I, I find so much inspiration in Star Wars. You know, the Rebels, especially look at Andor and Rogue One. The Rebels didn't always have they didn't play super nice all the time. You can't, unfortunately. It'd be nice yeah. if you could, <laughs> but you can't. And I think uh, you know, it's been it's I've learned a lot in my time away from online and was really inspired by Star Wars as I always am. And you can be nice and still fight back aggressively if you need to. Yeah. And I really, that's my new mentality. And I am here to help like, yep, nope. Stand up for yourself. If you're getting bullied, stand up for yourself. Don't be afraid. Uh, what, what I want to say is that I'm glad you had the peace of mind to like maneuver to like cover your kids about mm -hmm. the whole situation that you are able to walk away when you needed to. That you're taking steps to make sure, you, you know, like you're not gonna like get caught in a toxic time well with other people yep. online. Um, you know, I'm also glad that you got the custody of your kids and you're you're able to marry. Yeah. Like, like sometimes people's like memory seems like real short. Oh, and I remember I was still in high school and yeah. they just passed. Uh, across every state that you know, same sex marriage is allowed. Yep. Like, I was almost crazy? an adult when that happened. <laughs> Isn't that and crazy? I'm only 26. Like, <laughs> you know, future generations are going to look, look at us bathingly. It, it, it's like knowing how now we look back and that uh, uh, interracial marriage wasn't passed until the late 60s. Uh, Which is, that's not that long ago. No, no, it's not. And of course, of course, there's plenty of people that remember like it was yesterday, and you know, the yep. older now. But to, to us now, it seems like, you know, what? It seems crazy you know, to us. 
Especially it's, to someone like me who's half black. <laughs> yeah, it's bonkers. Like a lot of our listeners are pretty young. You know, they're your age. They're in their mid twenties, early twenties, and mm. <clears throat> things like like gay marriage have been around for their whole adult life now, right? And you know, I of course it's going to feel like forever. Which is good. You know, we're yeah, not which is great. Oh yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I'm very happy about that. Like I'm happy that my children yeah. don't know another world outside of that, you know? Like you should always remember, but I also think you should cel celebrate that newer people don't know anything different because that's what we were fighting for. But it's like it's still it's so bonkers to me that my husband and I have been together for 16 years. So still the majority of our relationship together, we were not allowed to be married. It's just like it's so <laughs> it's just so crazy to me. Like I and we're still, you know, so like I said, I'm not I'm yeah. used to it. I wish and, I wasn't and, used to it, but I'm used to yeah. like garbage in that and, way. And if you want to tie it directly into Star Wars. Yeah, you can say maybe like how like the rebellion is kind of anamorphous of what direct metaphor it can be, but it's mm -hmm. all about the people that are oppressed or not giving their time uh, fight back, and yep. eventually they earn what they are owed, whether yep. that means autonomy for you know their planets, whether it means that they don't have to live under a boot, uh, like. You know, they're, they're not being checked at uh, every like space airport for dock <laughs> every place they go. Like, there there are multiple ways. Uh, it, like, some issues are wide and systemic. It's about we had to fight back for the ones that are in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you know, that can be black people, that can be queer people, that can be poor people, that mm -hmm. can be people that can have access to like. Uh, citizenship it, it is always a struggle against you know the wider yep. machine yep. and eventually they will learn that they're, they're better with us at the table than not yeah eventually Darth Vader has to realize he's still more man than he is machine no matter what the physical matter is and he too realized that you know at the end that's what redemption was all about. And I do, I agree. The machine eventually have to realize like that it's a person too. And exactly. We now, can all share a table. Now, now did he necessarily deserve to go to Jedi heaven? Uh, I mean, <laughs> a, a <laughs> we had to do tally marks in each good and bad category <laughs> for him. A hundred percent. I think about that actually, because like I'm a pretty big avatar fan too. And that, is on Netflix, you know, the new show dropped. Yeah. The, the, and looking the, at Uncle Iroh, looking at Uncle Iroh in that show, who did some pretty terrible things. And here he is, the whole, we all love him. We all think he's great. He's so wise. And he's funny with like, his I, tea. Do you think he, he, he's great? Like, I wouldn't put him anywhere near the category of Darth Vader. But, yeah. like, I, I think I what makes him so great is that he is probably one of the greatest father figures in animation. Uh-huh. I mean, to be fair, a lot of shows, like, uh, you know, a lot of the dad is just the dumb guy that keeps falling over things. <laughs> but I just think he's just very solid. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's the one that, like, uh, a young man should look up to and be like, you know, I'm going to do that for my yep. kids. Yep. All of Avatar. Everyone should just look up to Avatar in general. It's pretty darn great. <laughs> I have segments where I ask my guests what they think is their favorite, their least favorite. Notice I didn't say worst. And <laughs> underrated. So I asked about movies, comics, okay. uh, novels, TV shows, and video games. Yeah. So as far as Star Wars Universe, yeah. what would you say are favorite, least favorite, and underrated for movies? In your opinion, of course. Oh, movies, for sure. My favorite is Return of the Jedi. Hands down, easy, no question. Forever and always. All right. You watch uh, Rock? What's that? <laughs> Ewoks Rock? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I love the Ewoks. Love the... Yep, yep. Uh, love Wicket. Wicket changed the game. I can go on <laughs> and on forever about that. Uh, I think Attack of the Clones is also... 
right, like right there, sharing this, almost sharing the same spot as Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi for me. So I would also say that Attack of the Clones, I think, is the most underrated of all the Star Wars. Okay. Especially, like I said, as an original OT guy, growing up as the prequels were like new and s dealing with all of that back then, like I always, like, I, it, yeah, I think Attack of the though, Clones is completely underrated. Yeah, even though Attack of the Clones was my favorite as, as a little boy, because yeah. I think that's one of the first movies I saw in theaters. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. and I was obsessed with it. Uh, over time, you know, there's there's things that I'm not feeling like the romance. I, I think is, you know, mostly really bad. <laughs> the dialogue, other than that, I don't, oh, really no, even, but that being said, it is doing a lot of heavy lifting for yep. the, the trilogy of like plot points. Yep. He was like, oh, snap, we have clones, and we're going to like explore almost everything about clones in this one movie, and eventually we'll get to a cartoon. Yep. Uh, and uh, so I'm guessing you're underrated with me solo because you, you like you really like that movie. Oh, I do. Solo is completely, definitely underrated. Um, mm -hmm. Like, here's honestly, this is the way I look at it personally. Like, I just, Star Wars is just its own thing for, in my mind. I can't even compare it to anything else because it is just its own holy thing. I don't love anything like I love Star Wars. So I can't even talk about other movies because even the worst of a Star Wars will be my favorite movie than any other movie. And I like love other movies too, but like just Star Wars is its own thing for me. That's the only way I can. Uh, like, I already ever... know you don't touch Tarantino. Uh, yeah, no, can't do it. Nope. Can't do it. Too violent for me. Um, which is a bummer because I think he's probably very talented. And uh, I think, I, I don't know. I've never seen a full Tarantino movie. Well, anyways, um, I'm so <laughs> yeah, Solo's like, I just feel Solo is a perfect Star Wars movie. Can I see from an objectively speaking, and I, I, I don't like to talk about the end because I don't think that's the movie's fault. And it was supposed to be three movies. I will say that maybe in today's movie making process, you should stick to making a movie be able to stand on its own and possibly turn into other things as opposed to everything needing to be two, three, four movies long and tie yeah. it into a TV show. I think that's dangerous. Yeah, think about it more episodic, but also like not have such a huge cliffhanger that exactly. it can only be solved by another movie. Uh, like, uh, like honestly like, like don't leave a tease like they did in the uh, 90s super mario brothers movie you're just like oh we gotta go on the adventure <laughs> and you know the movie flops and almost everybody oh i saw that movie in the movie theater yeah. oh uh yeah like i mean honestly the the first six star wars movies even the prequels that the dude knew there was going to be multiples right they can you can still just watch one and pick up on everything. You might not get every nuance, but every movie is a movie all in itself. And I just like this. That's just not how stories are told anymore. And that's not like a slam just on Star Wars movies. I, I just think it's this. It's uh, we're in an interesting place telling so, so stories do you think as a Star creative Wars art is a form. good movie to show uh, someone that's never watched Star Wars. No, not at all. I think like. The end of Solo, I love it. I think it would have been amazing to see that story continue to go. I think they could have done amazing things. And so the movie on its yeah. own doesn't I'm work anymore. Because... The Lando show. Come on, Donald Glover. Yeah, but like all of that stuff. Like, I, I mean, that movie clearly just stopped like almost mid-sentence. <laughs> and like, so as a movie, do I think Solo works? No. Not at all, but I think it feels so much like a Star Wars movie in the fact that there are like three different movies mm -hmm. all in that one thing. Like Return of the Jedi, I just watched a 20 minute blip of Return of the Jedi. And in that 20 minutes, so much happens. I was like, this 20 minutes feels like it's I just sat there for a three hour long movie. And like not because like it went flew by, but there was just so much. I watched from when the Emperor arrives to uh, the the Death Star two, to when Leia walks off with Wicket, and I'm like, 
we get the emperor's arrival we get like telling darth vader not to go after his son then we get like an entire idea that han solo is going on this super separate mission all on his own but didn't have a crew the crew was formed then we get to like introduce ewoks there's an entire speeder bike chase there's just like there's so much <laughs> there's so much happens in that movie there's so many adventures just in solo and i feel that's the same way with the attack of the clones like clearly when i look back and i think of like because right now my three favorite star Wars movies are return of the jedi attack of the clones and solo and it's been that way for many a year now. And those are all have a very clearly I know what my Star Wars jam is. And that is like lots of adventures that all kind of happen to tell one story. And it is very different than like The Empire Strikes Back. It is very different than The Last Jedi, which is a very like plot driven, very serious. Every every moment leads to the next moment. And like these other ones, they're just very sporadic, but fun. And I think that's what I love from a Star Wars. I love getting lost in the fun and all the themes and the morals. And they all come later. I don't th even think you're actively watching it going, wow, that's some amazing advice. Like I, my favorite part of any Star Wars ever, and I think the most important scene in any star wars is leia handing wicket the biscuit i just think it says so much about the thesis of what star wars is all about and you're not when you're watching and leia hand wicket a biscuit you're not thinking about the impact that that one moment has until you're like way later thinking about oh my god everything mm -hmm. everything changed in that one moment like literally the entire they did a 90 degree angle they went from losing to that was the first step of them winning everything it was because of that one decision i'm like ah. Oh, so good. So good. My favorite. Okay. So do you dabble in comics in, well, obviously you dabble with them in comics, but comics yeah. and novels? Because obviously I, you, I do. you have a big milk shout out in the comics. Yeah. You, you mentioned it. Oh, thank you, Justina. Yeah, pink milk is now canon. You know what I like to say to all the homophobes out there? Star Wars is definitely gay now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no <laughs> fans or much about it. <laughs> Whenever people are like Star Wars is gay, yes, it is. Clearly, have you seen Poe Scarf? <laughs> Isn't that bonkers? It was so uh, crazy. I yeah, let me yeah. tell you, I was a crying fool when so they're like yeah. So we Pink Milk is in issue number one of Santa Staros that came out in what April twenty two, I think right? Yeah, twenty two. Um. And I had the privilege of interviewing Justina Ireland before all that happened. And she's incredibly and super nice and super lovely. And one day I was scrolling through Instagram and I got a little DM message. And she's like, I didn't want to tell you anything because it wasn't approved yet. But the book went to print and Pink Milk is now canon. <laughs> and I had to sit on it for like months and I couldn't tell a single person. And it was so, ah, it's crazy. It's so, crazy. Uh, no, I don't have, you know, the connections and clout of Ireland, <laughs> not the country, the person. <laughs> but uh, I, I did let, um, uh, you know, Scotty from uh, Bombay Gas, right? Mm -hmm. I ah, let Scotty know that in my fan novel about Jar Jar Binks, there is a huge reference to Bombay Gas and its two hopes. Uh, because you know, obviously, bombad is like a terminology that the Gungans use, it means yep. either awesome or warrior, <laughs> depending yep. on the context. Uh, I established that the first humans to land on Naboo they land in an area called Bombad Cast Iron Ridge, <laughs> and it translates well the Gungan has their names kind of like like, you know, made into, like, alien words, basically. That okay. sounds similar. That's amazing. That had to yeah, make them feel because good. Because I'm, I'm real cool with them, you know. I hung out yeah. with Scotty on stream. I ate crawfish for an hour. That's <laughs> great. I, I was a guest when we were talking about Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. And I somehow horrified Jerry when I was up there. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I... <laughs> feel lucky to have been able to meet them at Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim. 
And they're such they're such lovely people. They're exactly who you think they are. I always imagined Scotty like was and like turning it on a little bit for his show. Oh. As you should, like as like entertaining. Like I I feel like when I'm behind a mic, I am probably way gayer than I am in real life. And maybe it's like I can be freer. I don't know what it is. Like I am there to entertain. And so you can turn uh, your, you know, turn yourself up. Like maybe in real life I'm an eight. And if I'm going to be streaming, I'm going to turn myself up to an 11. So have a good time. when you're just out on street, you're just Brian the dude. But when you're exactly, but when you're on camera, you're your your performance. <laughs> like you, I mean, you, like you, you, you can be a, a little more uh, playful. Yeah, extra. I just think I'm always a little more extra. So I just yeah. assumed like Scotty was gonna be the same way, right? Because Scotty is like a lot. He's like 150 percent all the time. I was like, oh my god, in real life you are like 150 percent. I love this. Like it, I was like, oh my god, how <laughs> how do you have that much energy all the time? It's great. He's and honest and he like a good person. Like when yeah. things are tough, reaches out. Um, I, I, I love him, but. There's like one movie that I'm just like, I feel like I need to convert him just a little bit on. I'm just like, okay, man, it's not that bad, okay? The one movie I, I feel like I need to convince him is not that bad is Matrix 4. Yeah. He, he acted like, like his equivalent of death. I'm just like, okay, dude, it's not that bad. Just give it, I feel like I need to help him give him another chance. Like, I, I acknowledge not the greatest movie ever. But I'm just like, once you get to a certain point, you're just like, oh, like, it, it's like, it's more like a, a book. That you're experiencing, then the, the you know block. what? I will be on the other side of that screen and we can corner him because I'm with you. Like, it's I really like Matrix 4 again. Matrix 4 as a movie, okay, maybe there's some like stuff going on, but uh, like, Matrix you want, as you want a Matrix movie is weak. I'm not gonna yeah. argue with you, I'm not gonna argue, yeah. like, they, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, they needed some help. Yep. They, they needed they needed yep. cor choreography months. Yep. But like Matrix Four is a Matrix movie, is amazing. And I think Matrix is Matrix is like Star Wars in the aspect of there is nothing else, nothing else like the Matrix. You can't really compare the Matrix to anything else. It's its own weird world. Mm. It's its own weird cross of so many things that it becomes its own yeah, thing. Okay. It's it's an amalgam of a lot of different ideas from other things. Like yeah. Star Wars is simultaneously a western. It's a highfalutin sci-fi space opera. It's you know it's it's a samurai movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a war drama. Uh, it's yep. a romance. And just like with uh, Matrix, it's a kung fu movie. It's a uh, intellectual like <laughs> conversation of what is reality a la like the invincibles in the mm -hmm. film uh it's also like every 90s anime oh, together it, 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 the, the, the comic series by uh uh, uh and, and then matrix is also incredibly gay like i yeah matrix it, it, came out true. It came out in 1999, I think, right? Because it came yeah. out a few months before Star Wars. It was made by two and, positive trans people. Yeah. And, and it's all about, you know, like wanting to live your true life. And, you know, let you, me tell you, in 1999, game. 1999, no one would have ever thought it was a gay movie unless you were a gay person living in the 90s. And I can't imagine what it would have been like as a trans person not being able to live the life that they should have and deserve to live yeah. and all of that is in there but i know like as a little 20 year old gay boy watching that movie is like oh my god this is my life every day that i step outside in the real world i was like very and and i was a club kid and the matrix is such a club kid oh yeah vibe it, 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 it I, is club <laughs> subculture of the 90s to the max <laughs> and i'm just like oh my it is the truth like i think about back to the days right and I would go to these nightclubs that were not in the best part of town. I was 19, 20, weighed maybe 110 pounds, this tiny, like tiny little thing. Yeah. And I had to behave a certain way. 
walking to there so I could maybe hopefully not be beaten up yeah. on my way there. And then the second I was inside, like it all came off and I was just like, we could all just a hundred percent be ourselves. And like, thank like, God we're in it. We're yeah, in a place now where you don't sequels, have to do that. Even when the sequels were, were not, at the, you know, clubs on earth, we have clubbing in like another spot of Zion where they're just sweaty. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I can see only like all the wearing is rags, but, but, but they're jamming. They're, they're jamming. <laughs> Hey, the drills are right outside. We're about to lose our last home. So let's have one last rave. I love it. I'm here for it. And look at this. I apologize. Here we are on a Star Wars podcast doing all this talking about not Star Wars. <laughs> hey, hey, going on topic is kind of what happens on this channel. Um, <laughs> it, it, is there any uh, like TV shows, video games, or books that you want to shout out as either your favorite, least favorite, or underrated before we get to the next point? Um... Street Fighter, love me some Street Fighter. Star Wars. Oh, video games. Yeah, I don't know. I can't play. Okay, how long has Jedi Survivor been out? Um, well, you know, a long time now, right? No, uh, it's been like a little over a year. Okay, maybe, well, a little over a year. Me. You know where I still am on my first mission because I can't figure out how to get to the boat. So, <laughs> still there. Not good at video games. <laughs> I'm just not like I have no skill in that department. I love them. Um, so yep, still trying to figure out how to get to the boat, the airboat. Um, I think my favorite Star Wars video game is probably still gonna be Super Street, uh Super Return of the Jedi okay. from the SNES, because you could play as as Princess Leia with a chain and whip people. Hut Slayer before the term Hut Slayer was a thing. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know about, you know what? Santa Star was number one. That's the greatest Star Wars comic book ever written. Did you read novels? I, yeah, uh, yeah. Tales from Jabba's Palace. It's probably my favorite Star Wars novel. Uh, <laughs> just because back then Max Rubo was dead until that book came out and then he was alive. I think modern Star Wars novels... Yeah, canon era. I think Ronan. See if it's not canon. Ronan is probably my favorite novel. I mean, it was canon era. But okay. It was just canon I like. I really like the High Republic a lot. It's fun. I haven't read all of it, but I've read a good chunk of it. But I, I, Ronan. The same with Star Wars Visions. I love Star Wars Visions. I mean, like, let's be honest. So Star much. Wars Visions is the you know the modern era version of Elseworlds. Yep. It's Especially just, I, I love what Emma Mika Candon was able to do in Ronin, and they were able to tell a whole new Star Wars story in a way that we have never heard it. But I feel understood the assignment of what Star Wars is. Mm -hmm. And I think in an era, and again, I think this is, it's not a it's not a slam against Star Wars because it's where we're at in mm. storytelling in media these days. Is that we're very risk averse. Everything is very safe. Uh, I should say a everything. Way. A lot of, a lot of things are very safe, yeah. and I feel like because, I feel like, like the one time that like the dashi. Uh, we're trying something, you know, just a minuscule bit, bit radical. The fans hated it, and it was called the Last Jedi. <laughs> they would not start playing, and then we had to play it the most safe possible when we got my Six Skywalker. A hundred percent. Like lately, I think uh, in our latest podcast episode, uh, that at least the time that we're talking isn't out yet. We're re we are uh, rewatching Ahsoka because we weren't making Pink Milk when Ahsoka was out. Yeah. So we're rewatching it. And I kind of love what Ahsoka is doing. It started in the Mandalorian, but Ahsoka, I think, is taking it to another level of talking about the New Republic. Yeah. And the New Republic are just a bunch of idiots. Like, they're just dumb. It's sloppy. I feel bad for my queen, Mon Mothma. She's trying. She's doing her best, but she is failing. And they're all just a bunch of bumbling idiots who literally didn't learn anything from their two decades being under the empire 
still judging everybody the same way the Empire did yep. with their weird cops pulling random aliens over for no reason other than like you you shouldn't be able to drive that car out here in space. Mm-hmm. And I have decided that I it is like Lucasfilm's middle finger up at Disney. And I feel like the entire New Republic is Disney. And <laughs> Lucasfilm is trying to fo- trying to fly their <laughs> radicalized. Just a metaphor for the company itself. I I feel like I feel like Disney is still the rebellion, fighting against their new government, telling them what to do, and playing so, to so save. Like so, 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 so your theory is like this is the in-house equivalent of when uh, Trek One made fun of Disney World by having you know the fake fantasy spot they can go to, and it's like uh-huh. all monotonous and it all sucks. <laughs> But, yep. but they're doing it from the inside. Uh, <laughs> they're calling for help. Because <laughs> I mean, I have no no evidence for that, but it is making me feel better, and it is making me um, appreciate the nuances in some of this these Disney Plus stories. Like, look at Andor. Andor is hands down, I think, the most well written, the most well acted. I just, it is like Andor is on another level and it is amazing. And I can't believe they were able to do what they were able to do. It's not like, I don't run to it and think it's my favorite Star Wars in the world, but I respect the heck out of it. And I really love it. And I think it is like, I think objectively speaking, it's probably the best of the new Star Wars things. Like it is not a show that was like, well, I can't wait to rewatch this episode. Oh yeah. yeah, That was very well done. And like it, it, it holds its place as some of the best material in the franchise. Hundred percent. And I love it. Did something similar to like why I think I love Ronan the best. Of not the best. I like. I really appreciate and respect Ronan for it's taking a real up. risk. Yeah. Like and Andor did the same thing. It didn't play it safe. It wanted to go play in the world of Star Wars and make something new with it. And that's just kind of. I've still so much to this day who I want to see people take risks. I'd rather watch something not succeed than just try to rehash what's already successful, if that makes sense. And that goes for almost any media in general. And that's probably the little radical queer guy in me of like, let's challenge authority. Like, but I, 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 I respect the heck out of it. And I think sometimes, sometimes Star Wars right now plays it really safe and it's not that it's bad it's like still very very good but i think some of this stuff plays it very safe and you're right it's because of the backlash um but i don't think that's lucasfilm making those decisions that's my in my own like in my own let's um make some uh crazy radical theories what, well, what's that what's you're what you're for? in the right space <laughs> you're in a safe space to talk about radical okay now, there we go <laughs> You didn't watch my iceberg video, did you? I've watched half of it, yes, and I feel very bad. My intention was to watch all of it. It's okay. I'm, 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 okay. I'm trying to call you up. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you're here, it's kind of my responsibility to talk about three things that uh-huh. are frequently brought up theories of mine. Mm-hmm. Does this make you feel anything? This image right here. Yeah, it okay. makes me want to take down the bad guys. Okay, do, do you know who these characters are? Can you can you guess? I I mean, if I'm looking at it, it's a well. I was gonna say the Rancor, but I think it's a Wampa, Leia, and and Palpatine, right? Okay, you got Palpatine right. This is Ray. Oh, that's Ray. They're up. Okay, and that's this Ray. Is the Beast. Oh, way to go! Look at you breaking out the Zillow Beast. Okay, I'm here for it. My conspiracy is that Ray is part Zilla Beast. I okay. Um, we did just see a crazy clock wheel of random weird clone blood doing something mysterious. I and we know they're cloning the Zillow Beast. I'm here for it. Exactly. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, why are we setting all this up to bring the Zilla Beast into Mount Tantus, the same place where they're doing all the experiments to make sure they can clone all, you know. Christmas Sheev over here. 
so he can like destroy what he needs to. Yeah. Um, so in my Skywalker, we we see that the Emperor is able to absorb electricity and he becomes younger. And yep. it's like, hmm, absorb electricity become more powerful. Seems pretty zilla like. Mm-hmm. And we know that Ray is descended from the clone emperor. So if he has it in his bloodstream, yeah. then it will pass down to her, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it will come through Dathan. <laughs> Dathan last uh... name to to Ray. And I like it. I like it. I backed up this conspiracy by saying, you know, how can I explain this through Ray forward, right? Well. We see that Ray is able to con the Vexus snake. Mm-hmm. Lizard recognized lizard. Okay, love it. Lo- I'm here for this. Conspiracy theory brain, like my little neurons are firing off. I like it. <laughs> and when she sees the evil version of herself uh, in the direction of the second Death Star, the evil version of herself has sharp teeth. Hmm. So, if we see Ray rest in the sun, like under, like like a lamp, or she starts shedding, or we see Doctor Pershing in the past, you know, examine some, you know, lizard scales. I feel like I'm old to check personally. I <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Sharp teeth ray is one of the things that I don't understand. Um, so I like this theory to help me understand sharp teeth ray because she looks cool. Yeah. Oh, that collapsible lightsaber like is badass. Yeah, all of it's. I mean, I still don't look. I don't understand the clone not looking. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it looks. That's all. Look, look. I'm going to give you. That's all of the rise of Skywalker. Does the rise of Skywalker make sense? Probably not at all. But am I going up and down that roller coaster and squealing the entire time? And does it look great? Here we go. Here for it. Does Daisy Ridley also probably give her best performance out of any of the movies in that movie? I think so. For me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I look, I love it's Star Wars. I love it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Now, if you, if you want me to play with visuals, I think some of the color grading in that movie is really bad. But that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> Um, one of my other conspiracies is that um, Leia wanted to smash Luke. She wanted to? Still? Yeah, that's my conspiracy. The okay. reason I say this, or that she was also attracted to him in some way. The reason yeah. I say this is because when Luke is like, hey, you know, I got a sister too. She's like, somehow I've always known. If a deleted scene doesn't contradict the movie, I consider it to be canon. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't yeah, directly like contradict that. anything in like official canon, I'm just like, well, it probably fits. Yeah. Uh, like when uh, Bruce Banner like shoots himself in the Incredible Hulk, well, like that gets referenced again in yep. Avengers. So like, okay, that happened. Like, there's, there's no reason that couldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. So. When I see a deleted scene of Luke and Leia for Empire Strikes Back, and they get real flirty before Han and Chewbacca come through, and they get real close to kissing, and there is like a cheesecake level density as an amount of incestuous uh, connection. To me, that shows that she wanted it. And even when uh, the droids interrupt them. She looks disappointed. Okay. She's disappointed she didn't get the kiss from the person that she knew was her brother because that's canon now. <laughs> okay. I like it. And, I can, okay. And, and, like, of course we know Luke was a simp. Like, we didn't need to go over that. Like, he bites his lip and one of the canon comics, you know, he's like, docks at her. And when I explained oh, that yeah. to Jerry, from Bombay Cast, he said that's the Pornhub gen- generation writing Star Wars, which is probably one of the greatest quotes I've had on my channel. Now. 
<laughs> okay. Take a breath because this this next one, something else. Now okay. keep in mind, this conspiracy theory I do not believe. I just think it's fucking funny. Okay. So, you know Snoke. Mm -hmm. You know Mutt Williams. Mm -hmm. Same person. Okay, explain this to me. I. <laughs> okay. This all stemmed from me being on SSW Network, and we were having a discussion about uh, Last Jedi, and I was defending it. And I said, we don't need to see Snoke's backstory. We don't need to see him when, when he was a greaser. I'm like, wait, greaser? Mutt. And like we're, we were building up to the release of Dial, Dial of Destiny, and I was re-watching all the Indiana Jones movies. Yeah. So at the end of King of the Crystal Skull, we see fucking aliens uh -huh. just leave uh -huh. and all the heroes are like well that was that let's go to a wedding i'm like excuse me you gonna tell me that no one's gonna check on what the fuck just happened in peru nobody you know what character seems like the one who will go, go back and check when he's not supposed to mutt does maybe he took a chunk of alien painting from one of those murals, and he tied it to the back of his, you know, new bike. Mm. And either he gets abducted while he's in Peru or in America or serving in Vietnam with the chunk was still with him. Yep. And he gets abducted by the same alien, and they start making him look like them. That's when he becomes all gray and lanky. They stab into his brain to put cybernetic implant to his brain to tap into his anger of not having that true bottom thing in his life. So he's living vicariously through Kylo Ren to kill Han Solo because he's like, oh, your dad looks just like my dad. I want him to be dead. Well, hey, I, you know what? It just brings more confirmation to how great Solo is. And Solo is here to help, help connect your theory with the little, like, glowy idol thing from Raiders of the Lost Ark over there in, yeah. uh, What's his name's boat? The driving I'm, bar. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I like it. Okay, now, yeah. It might make me like Indiana Jones more. Jerry uh, helped, you know, like my conversation about this because he thinks it's funny because obviously we mm -hmm. don't take this seriously. It's just, just fun. Yeah. Um, he was just like, you know, if you took a clay model of, of a mixture of uh, Harrison Ford in Shia LaBeouf's face and it fell on the carpet. It still had like chips on it. It would look like Snoke. <laughs> I'm going to, as soon as this call is done, I'm going to hop on to Google. I'm going to get Shia LaBeouf from that Sia video where he looks very hot and I know the dude's mess, but yeah. Um, Once again, being, 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 uh, being a bad person and being yep. simple, are, are, are I, uh, but you can still be hot. Yeah, yeah. Be I'm here for. Yeah, and be terrible sometimes makes you hotter, which is the problem with being a human being and all those that grossness that involves. But you know, yeah, yeah. there you it is. Smack your own hands, like no. Exactly. So I'll look at that version of Shia LaBeouf, and I'm gonna get a Dial of Destiny. Let's go Dial of Destiny, Harrison Ford. And I'm gonna go into Photoshop. And I'm going to use some new those new neural fil filters. I'm going to combine those two faces or, or together. Or you can use like ZBrush. Yeah, there we go. Let's do it. I'm gonna. I like it. I like it. And let's see some Snoke. Because <laughs> I'm I am full on Team Snoke. Love Snoke. Think uh, it's great. There's still so much to go there. I am here for it. So mm -hmm. any any Snoke theories? Yeah. Snoke Let's was to reform a life. <laughs> Let's do it. I yep. Oh my gosh. Can we how can we put Snoke then with the uh with the mod squad, the mods from the Book of Boba Fett? Which are like Star Wars versions of Greasers, kind of. Right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I, 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 I mean Snoke had some sparkly gold maybe, slippers on. Maybe just they like become the, maybe they become the knights of Snoke. So the Knights of Ren, he has no, he has no one posse. <laughs> no, I. Why couldn't the Knights of Ren be mods? Why can't? Why can't they? We probably know. I don't know anything about the, their backstories, really. 
Um, okay. Well, I'm on team mod though too. Let's go with the mods. Before we start wrapping up with the glup shit of the episode. Yes. I, I, I want to regale you with, with a nickname. Okay. Because a lot of people that I've done videos with or that I converse with on their channels, I have taken their name and rapified it. Love it. Okay. So Jerry became G Easy. <laughs> Scotty became Scott Rock. Scott uh, Rock. That's Boopenheim became Boop Dog. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I love that. <laughs> uh, uh, Jerry became Spliff Jar, like, you know, Spliff Star, that's Rhyme's friend. Um, Buck O'Brien became Young Buck. Um, Scott's brother, I can't remember his name right now, but his his handle on Twitter was like something something pug. So now he's young pug. You know, I need to say hi to Bucky Box real quick. Hello, Bucky Box. I love Bucky Box. Uh, Pete from SSW. Um, he's Pete Rock now. Okay. Nick is Nick Ross, and Chris is Ludacris. <laughs> oh, and uh, Scotty Holiday, who I have it on the channel, Travis Scott, which you know, yeah, I'm a little disappointed about because like you know the whole controversy of like the 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 death. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you know, still. Hey. Scotty, they You're can talented. reverse that. They can fix it. I'm not yes. going to act like Utopia doesn't slap. <laughs> okay. Uh <-huh. laughs> I can't. <laughs> but you are now Bri Dollar Sign. Oh, okay. You know, like Bri Dollar Sign. Uh huh. The Rack Singer. Uh huh. Okay. Was he uh, part of Migos, right? Didn't he? Was he part no, of Migos? No, no, no. Uh, oh. Look, I'm starting to sound old. I know who he is. I'm singing for like Big Sean and. More recently, uh, Kanye released his album. He was okay. like on every song where he didn't sing. Um, now see. You, can't was... save, you can't save the album by singing, but he he does pretty good. <laughs> I okay. Let's um, see. I... And the last uh, announcement that I would like to make is that I'm still working on my own version of episode nine script. Eventually, okay. it will be out. And I'm going to do a video where it's going to have my drawings with it. I'm going to do narration, uh, it. it's going to have music that I'm not not going to monetize any of it because it's going to be copyrighted. Yep. Way um, to go. So, Brian. Yes. Are you ready? And, and yes, this is my this is my little critic. Hello, uh, critic. Um, are you ready for the glop shit of this episode? Uh huh. Are you familiar with the character of? H F three three one one. Nope. Not until I see a picture, then maybe I will be. The, this character looks familiar. Oh. Uh, was that the traitor yeller? No. Here's another image of the character. No, but I kind of like this person. Okay. Stormtroopers always look kind of sexy. So I'm here for it. Yeah, and you can tell just by the image, you know, Force Order, uh, Stormtrooper with Electric Pod um, during the Resistance War, uh, Lady from uh, Gannon area. In 3580Y, she was deployed to Pasana. Okay. When the Knights of Ren of Aplek in Kuruk. She aided in capturing Chewbacca. Oh. She forced him onto the AAL-1971 hyphen <laughs> 9.1 troop transport. I just have to tell you how much I love nerds. <laughs> I love that we will look all this stuff up. <laughs> So she, she helped him putting him on the transport, the one okay. that Ray didn't explode that she should have because it was like actually made more like stakes in the movie. But that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. so, or not found out five minutes later. Yeah. Let it breathe the, a little. The, the, the transport took them to the resurgent class Star Destroyer Steadfast, which she helped present Chewbacca to General Hux and uh, Legion General Pride. 
when he roared on Hux's hair, just flopping all that ginger gingerness in front. <laughs> she and other troops took Chewie to an interrogation six before he has, uh, before Chewbacca escaped, and the ship that she was on was destroyed during the Battle of Mexico. Okay. That's all we have. I, you know, mad, mad props, mad respect. <laughs> I, I love that we go to these places as nerds. We're going to find out. I'm still stuck in 1980 land, personally, uh -huh. and still use like Walrus Man and Hammerhead. Yeah. Yeah. Snaggletooth. Uh huh. I still have all of those names stuck in my head. Um, but I love that we don't have to do that anymore and we can go to Wikipedia and mm. wherever we all have to go. Mad props it's to like, you. Oh, look. I love uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you. Eat Therm Scissor Punch. There we go. <laughs> oh, Therm. That is probably one of the greatest Star Wars names ever. See, I remember when more props to Solo was being revealed to Solo. through Denny. Uh -huh. And I told a friend of mine what his character's name was, and she didn't believe me. <laughs> She's like, I'm fucking lying. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's like, that's Oh, uh, God. But how do you feel about HF3311? Uh, do you want to see more of her? Do you want a real name? Uh, nope, that's can perfect. She, can she be redeemed? Uh, before she died, um, you know, can she be brought I, back like Boba Fett? Why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. She, you know, throw some, throw some dirt on her. I like that in that image of her just there. Like I, she was sexy. So <laughs> why can't can she be? I think a lot of it is like the. Most of the First Order uniforms, or the, 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 the sequel trilogy Stormtroopers, have very sleek designs. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be honest, and I might get hate for this, but the the original Stormtrooper outfit is not sexy. It, like, looking back, it, it, it's, it's like it's just a design. Uh, like, it, 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 like, I know it's iconic, but it's also kind of... You funny. might get some hate from this guest right now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. Oh mm. like that, that's that's probably one of my ho hottest takes that I have. <laughs> and I have a lot of them. I acknowledge that. I, um, I talked I talk some mad shit about Empire Strikes Back in the relationship between Han and Leo. Yeah. How I think it's creepy. But <laughs> oh. oh, it's definitely like uh through the lens of 2024, like really not okay. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. Can I get a little, um, yeah. If you need to get spicy, get spicy, okay? I do. I, okay, I'm just going to say that 1977 Stormtrooper codpiece is equally as sexy as Robin Chris O'Donnell's codpiece from Batman and Robin. And those codpieces probably made me gay. <laughs> It was a damn Star Wars. <laughs> it was damn Star Wars as well. I think stormtroopers. This is like this is like the same level of sexiness that like creepy Shia LaBeouf is. Like it's wrong on every level. Stormtroopers are horrible people, but those well, costumes, like it's like they might punch me after they do whatever they need to, and I'm here for it. Well, you know, I, I was describing uh, the stormtrooper outfit not sexy as in. It, it causes me to like want to fuck it. It's more about like I think um, it's sleek. Like yeah, you know, okay. like how Gordon Ramsay yeah. describes certain dishes as being sexy and as flavor. There we go. Okay, yes. So that, that's what I meant in that context. If I talk okay. about a person like that, you, can, you know it's horny. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, or, or, I'm speaking the, the, or I'm speaking on the horniness of someone else's behalf. <laughs> Okay, yeah. No, I mean, I'm because here for the first time. I told Scotty, uh, Scotty Holiday that I am the gayest straight man that you will know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we like you. No, I mean, look, I will say that the First Order Stormtroopers are great. Love them. Think they're a wonderful design, especially I'm here for the Sith Trooper. I like the little ribby rib part of their, their armor. It's very cool. Um, 
and they are definitely very sleek and sexy in a way that the storm like the original stormtroopers are not no for sure but like I, of course i i'm i'm acknowledging like i also want to acknowledge like like they were building from basically nothing from back in the day. yes so the oh. fact they got anywhere near as like is not jarring mm-hmm. is a testament like once again this example we're building on the the, the shoulders of giants mm-hmm. we just made it cooler <laughs> like it, and, yeah it okay really, yeah you know what i'm saying they're definitely cool yeah i mean like, i still i think the raptor quarry design looked better than uh, the, the official like version that, that came out and, and i, I think the, I think okay. the bike, bike scout trooper helmet still works very well I think bikers, the cool. biker scouts are my favorite stormtrooper of any of any stormtrooper. I think they look great. I will say, okay, Ralph McQuarrie. This will get me hate probably, but that's okay. I my favorite version of Darth Vader is Darth Vader from Rebels. My favorite lightsabers in any of Star Wars are the lightsabers from Rebels. They look okay. so good. They look so different than you know. You know anything. who might get upset about this? Like, of course, I love him to death. It is my dad because he's just like they're Uh-oh. not thick enough. They're not thick enough. So. Uh, see, I think that's they look. Oh God, looks so good. I love those lightsabers so much, and I need to see them in live action. Like, outside of the dark saber, I don't. Uh, yeah, I I'm not a super huge fan of modern day lightsabers on screen. Okay, I mean, that, personally, that's fair. It's, it's all like an aesthetic. Like, yeah, what, 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 what makes you feel like, oh yeah. Yeah, but the dark sa- like the dark saber, pretty sexy. Yeah, it, it, it the is dark saber. Sleek, it is smooth. Yeah. It has that nice hum. Yeah, and then the character that should care the most about it for some reason crushes it in his hands yep i mean that's why i call the dark sabers gay like it is the gay lightsaber i will stand by that i've said that for a very long time i feel that way um yeah okay yeah and that's why it belongs to uh, it belongs to jim tarn this is a joke that i've made before i, I think of uh moth gideon as mm-hmm. a weeb Mm-hmm. He, he, he's like a samurai cosplayer that just really wants <laughs> this nice katana. <laughs> but he doesn't he has... respect the actual culture. Mm-hmm. He's just like, isn't this cool? Isn't this cool when I have this helmet on? <laughs> um, yes, very much. But the, the, the famous conversation about Stormtroopers, I think my personal favorite uh, design is the Shore Trooper. Or uh, they're Trooper. pretty great, too. Uh, I think it has great color. It, it great. feels different enough. I think it has good, like, the soft red and blue accents. Look mm-hmm. real nice. And, yep. like, you know, I was losing my mind when I saw it again in Andor. I was like, they're back. And they're, they're up close. <laughs> yeah. And, and I... they, have, they have nonsensical... Leg capes. I love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why you need a cape to run around in water, I don't understand. But I, I agree. I'm here for the extraness of it all. I I will say, I think objectively, and probably not objectively because he's my son, so therefore it's impossible. But I'm going to say Phase 2 Clone Trooper, which I know technically aren't Stormtroopers, but I'm going to put them in the same box as Stormtroopers might be the best because he has loved that specific costume more than any other costume since he was four he is now 10 he still feels that way he's been he has seen all of the star war obviously and is a and is a sequel trilogy kid because of how old he is right in the generation yeah. we're in and that is the one that still to this day like carries the most weight for him yeah so like maybe maybe universally speaking cross generations as people who like you know a four-year-old doesn't know they just know what's good they have no basis for why they think it's good so it's like the truest form of like no that's great if a four-year-old approves 
it just works on every level because there's no there's no knowledge of why it works it just does and so i'm always like let's let's do it and that feels very star wars give it to the kids yeah. kids make the yeah. ultimate decisions like i i have <laughs> uh, a little brother who he's like around 12 now right yeah so i'm 26 okay so i introduced him to star wars I, sh mm -hmm. I, sh I showed him the original show first, so in the prequels. Good and for you. Because he was so excited to see Force Awakens because he kept seeing trailers for it all the uh -huh. damn time. And uh -huh. he, he he vaguely knew what Darth Vader was, but he was like, yep. he's just the evil bad guy with lightsaber. He, he didn't know all the backstory, mm -hmm. and he was only like four. So, like, you can't blame him. And so I showed them all, and there's one really great moment when I showed him Bridge of the Sith. He turned to me about halfway watching it. He says, Eric, and I'm like, yeah. He says, I think that guy is the Emperor. And he was able to figure this out before Anakin did. I did not tell him who the Emperor was, if he was Palpatine. I did not tell him any yeah. of that. Yeah. I love it. Like, that's <laughs> the crazy stuff when we're, look, like, a lot of people, when the prequels first came out, he was only the Emperor. There was no other name. He was just the Emperor. So if anyone even knew his name, it was only the Emperor. And most people just thought he was the old dude from Return of the Jedi. Right. Didn't know it was the same actor. We didn't know his government first name was Exactly. She. Like, we, I was like, I loved being alive and watching, like, the world discover that that guy was the Emperor the whole time. Like, it was such a great thing. Of course, we knew long before it started. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Uh, Michael very much is... I love that Michael, who's my youngest son, who's a massive Star Wars fan, and that kid, I can't believe how much about Star Wars he knows because, like, it is so complicated now. There's well, so he, much Star Wars he, out he, there. He's he running rings around you now? <laughs> oh, he sure does. He corrects me literally all the time, and I'm always so proud. Uh, and I thought you were supposed to be a Star Wars fan, Dad. That's his uh -huh. go-to. He's like, I think I'm the biggest Star Wars fan in the house. Um, he's like, one... me, that is a L-A-A-T. Oh, yeah, no, I have been um actually so many times by my 10-year-old. Uh First, he's got taste. Tech of the Clones is his favorite Star Wars movie because it's the romantic one. So you, we can dog the dialogue all we want, but that kid hams it up every single time. I don't know how many times I randomly will walk into a room and he is watching the balcony scene from Attack of the Clones. He loves it. He watches that scene, the dinner scene. He is here for it. I'm like, oh, he's going to make someone very lucky someday. If he's already like that diehard of a romantic and that's his like favorite scenes from well, Star Wars or the uh, romance uh, parts. He's going to treat someone very well. Uh, across better lines and at a link scene. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just like, oh. Yeah, but you got to start somewhere. That's you got to start too. somewhere yeah. when you're young. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I, I, I love listening to him try to understand how the Jedi fell. And it makes me so happy for the prequels and Clone Wars and all of that kind of stuff. And... George knew what he was doing, and those are beautiful stories. And to have this young kid. 100%. Yeah. But like when he's like, I don't understand how good people, you know, they're supposed to be the good guys and they are doing all these bad things, but they don't know they're doing the bad things. And I'm just like, oh God. Like that mm -hmm. is why I love Star Wars. It is like mm -hmm. affecting these little kids that will hopefully, and that's, you know, question that's what like <coughs> excuse me like andor star wars can speak to kids and give them these really complex nuanced thoughts ideas and never gives them the answers how to solve things but gets kids to think and it always uh, you know not sure how i just arrived there from our conversation but i did and it's probably because I mean, my son and i love it but like i love that he does wrong. i love it yeah <laughs> I love that your little brother was like watching these things. It's like, I think that dude's Palpatine. And like the things that he, he must have thought about Emperor. this character the whole time. Or yeah, 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 he is Palpatine, the Emperor. Uh, like, I just love that it makes people question these kinds of things. You know what I mean? From when they're really little. And I, I don't even think I could have watched it that way until you said that just now. Like Palpatine was kind of portrayed as a good guy for the majority of the prequels. 
Like, I couldn't watch it that way because I know he was bad. So I'm just saw, like, I can only see him as a chess player. He already knew it was the same actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, I never was able to experience the trick that he's actually a bad guy. I was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's, wow, that's amazing. Well, that's I, I remember. Cool. I'm really glad you shared that. I, that's kidding, like, I, I, I did not want to believe my father that Anakin mm -hmm. is not the same person. I, I was rooting for Anakin. I, I was on his side. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Uh, somehow I just, you know, got blindsided by him, like, you know, doing a little ethnic cleansing against the sand people. But <laughs> speaking of which, I think Padme is partially racist. Oh, partially? She is oh, you think the person. I'm, I'm oh, like, look, I mean, I can only think about, like, see these world this through the lens of a queer person and i can tell you how many microaggressions i've had to deal with in my life from people who would never have said that they were a homophobe but the yeah. things they say are like oh my god like you i don't think you know you don't like gay people but you do not it's like, like gay people i think you think <laughs> just because you say you don't want to like burn me yeah it doesn't, but like that you don't respect me or you don't see me as yeah. legitimate or you don't like yeah. I think I'm cool. Like, like you know, on I think there I I I think look, and I think Padme is a good person, and I think there are plenty of people out there who are probably good people. They think they're think doing the right person. thing, but they're not doing the right thing, and and they can grow and learn and go. Oh, and I believe that Padme is the person. She's not a Karen. She would have listened, mm -hmm. and I haven't. I think Padme is a good enough person that she would have listened, right? She was never given that opportunity because she died young. But, 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 but why do you say yeah. that she, she, she her, her specifically is, is racist? Like, what, what can you point to? Because I got something. Oh, no. I mean, I think some of the, like, like the same people stuff. Like, literally, she just, like, ignored everything. I feel like, oh, God, I know there's some stuff happening in Clone Wars. That, like make me it's mostly clone wars that i feel that way it's the way she speaks and treats the geon oceans honestly the way she kind of gaslit all of the the gungans in a way and like uh i feel lied to them said we can only do this together even though she probably felt like you think she has like a white savior complex yeah she's working. getting we can only do this together and by doing this together i'm going to use you as the front lines cannon fodder while us humans <laughs> Go and the unguarded temple. It's like the South Park movie. They're just like, we're gonna send the, you know, we're not gonna say it, but the Black Division first uh -huh. <laughs> into the front line. Oh, and uh -huh. then we'll have the white soldiers go through. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I agree with the the, the, the Tuscan Raider uh, slaughter because she comforts Anakin. Like I, I know, you know, Mama Skywalker's dead. Like I, I understand that. Uh huh. But. You don't even cry for testing raiders. Like you, you heard that the kids were being sliced up by by the dude. But oh, when it comes to the predominantly human population of the younglings, oh, you cry then. You cry uh -huh. about their lives. You you see them yeah. as people, but they're the testing raiders. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, because they don't have the, the same religion and language as you. Okay. Yeah. I, I you know. Good. I mean, I agree one hundred percent. I agree with you 100%. I'm going to play devil's advocate for just a second, just because I don't know why I probably shouldn't, but she wasn't pregnant yet. And I will say, becoming a parent does make you more open to things than I think you, like, I mean, I, look, I'm a pretty liberal person. Mm -hmm. I think just by definition of who I am forces me to, like, be more open to different ideas. It's one of my, yeah. I love the queer community because we are everyone. So therefore, a lot of us in the queer community, I feel very open to different kinds of things, right? I will say, all of a sudden, I became a dad. And I am very much more careful about how I say things about like, I don't know, mostly let's just, I'll just put it out there. I don't know. Like I'm very, I am way more delicate when how I walk around my idea of church and religion and mm -hmm. the American government in general.
because those are the things that I don't particularly like very much. And I'm very judgmental and very nasty about it. But I'm like, okay, but if my kids want to go to church, like I can't, like, I'm not going to, I don't want to be the parent to stop them because I just, that's for them to make. And so, you know, like, I, will like, say, I will say I've become softer to the idea of like super religious people. Yeah. Like, where in the past, I've been very like, no. Past, you know, unfair judgment on everyone. Exactly. That gets in contact exactly. with it because exactly. not everyone that works for the government is like, you know, trying to take out, you know, the next Fred Hampton. Like, that's just not exactly. how it is. Yeah. And not everyone that's religious. Oh, so yeah. either super religious is just be, gonna be like, you know, like we, 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 we got yeah. the gays. Like we got. I mean, go. before we yeah, like anybody. before before I was a dad, I wouldn't. I just would never really even open myself up to having a, like to have a conversation with a super religious person. It just wouldn't happen. I still have one eye open. You're it, it's speaking from kind of like a low key gener, generational trauma, where uh, oh. Like, because not even low key, full volume. You and people <laughs> like you are hurt. Like you don't even want to touch the subject. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, regardless of like how good faith, well, how good faith it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, a hundred percent. And I mean, I'm still that. I am still there to this day. But I am more open, and I am definitely less vocal than I used to be because I wouldn't want to. For all I know, my kids might find church one day and like be really into it and i would never want to stop them from that so like i, I you know so i'm going to give padme a little bit of a okay maybe she's become more open because now she knew she was pregnant not that i think people should be necessarily given a free pass to be bigoted or whatever but you know like whatever i don't know active bigotry is like uh yes like more subconscious which you know what honestly is the more the most dangerous kind of bigotry with coming <laughs> coming from people who don't know they're being bigoted that's the most dangerous kind mm -hmm. because then you're more likely to let other occurrences from other people slide uh -huh. yep so you know it's complicated it's a complicated thing yeah. and we'll put it that way all right is there any uh, shout outs or any questions you have from me before we sign off I don't think so. Thank you again for having me. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad you came through. I appreciate I it. We had, you know, uh, sometimes emotional, but you know, also funny. Uh, yeah. Know, talk. Well, you know, if you enjoy, it, that's that's just I feel like pink milk in general. I feel mm -hmm. like you'll laugh as much as you cry when you listen to that podcast because we're pretty open about stuff. Uh, <laughs> I get very emotional. Star Wars makes me very emotional because I relate to Star Wars, and I don't know any other way to. Uh, it's how I process real world stuff. I feel is always filtered through Star Wars. My poor son, my oldest son has to hear so many like dad talks. Well, in Star Wars, this happens or that happens because that's really the only way I know how to approach life. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being here. Um, check out Death X Robots. You know, maybe check out some old videos you can find of Pink Mel. Yep. You know, Do it. You know, on, 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 you know, old school, Brian. Uh, you know, you, you can <laughs> still watch me here. Um, once again, thank you for how many views we've gotten on my iceberg video. Like, I, I, yeah, good I for you, dude. It. I haven't been able to talk about it because, like, I haven't really made a video in a few months. But I, I'm I'm glad everyone has been supportive. Um, yeah, good for you. That's great, Brian. Uh, I hope you stay safe out there. You do as well. Thank you for having me. And uh, anytime you want to do this again, I'm here.